This next set of videos is going to focus on graphs and efficiency with those graphs. We're going to attempt to answer the question to start off with, how do we find the shortest path between two points? And to set this up, we're going to establish some vocabulary around these things called graphs. A graph is going to be a set of dots, which we're going to call vertices. And edges connecting those vertices. So for example, I might have these four dots. These would be four vertices. And let's label the dots so we know what we're talking about, A, B, um, C, and D. And those dots or vertices would be connected with edges. They can connect to each other. You can even connect them with themselves. They can loop around and connect with themselves if you wanted to. So as we're talking about this graph, some key vocabulary we're going to be interested in. First, I've already mentioned vertex or vertices would be the plural. A vertex is a dot in the graph that represents a location. So in my example here, A would be a dot or a point on the graph, while an edge is a line connecting two vertices that represent a path between locations. So in my graph up here, this might represent uh, four different islands. And the lines might represent bridges that connect those islands. A loop is an edge that connects a vertex to itself. And you see vertex B has a loop that connects B to B. The degree of a vertex we're going to often be interested in is the number of edges meeting at the vertex. So if I look at point D, point D has a degree of 1 because there's one line coming out of it or one edge coming out of it. Point C has a degree of 3. Point A has a degree of 2. And B actually has a degree of 4 because we count both of the loops coming in and out of it. Often with graphs, we're interested in creating either a path or a circuit. A path is a sequence of vertices that uses the edges. Maybe we would say the path is A, C, B. That path 
uses several edges and tells you where to go. You start at A, we go to C, and then we go to B. That is a path or a sequence of vertices. A circuit is a path that begins and ends at the same vertex. So a circuit would be something like A, C, B, A, because now going back to A at the end of it, it begins and ends at the same place. One other vocabulary we're often interested in with graphs is the weight. And weights are assigned to edges to represent something about the connection between the points. Maybe it represents the distance. Or maybe it represents the time it takes to get from point A to point B. Or maybe the cost to get from point A to point B of that edge. And so we're going to use this vocabulary as we talk about graphs and work with graphs. And kind of to set this up, I want to talk about a special graph called the bridges of Koinsberg. Koinsberg is an ancient German city. It actually um, is now in modern day Russia. And this picture is a map of what uh, used to be an important part of Koinsberg. And the idea here is that there are several islands. We've got this main island here in the center. We've got this island off to the side. We've got uh, the north bank. And we've got the southern bank. And there's several bridges that are connecting these areas. We see that there's um, one bridge connecting in the middle. Actually, there's two bridges connecting in the middle. And then there's two bridges connecting from the south. The island is connected to the island. And then it's also connected to the north bank. And this picture is actually missing the bridge that connects it to the south bank. Anyways, the idea, the game of the time of the day was to see if it was possible to walk across every single one of these bridges without crossing a bridge twice. Let's say you start on the southern bank, and maybe you cross bridge 1, and then you cross bridge 2, then you go across to the island. Then maybe we could cross here, cross the next bridge, cross the next bridge, and bummer, I didn't make it. I missed one of the bridges off to the right. And so I might try a different path. Maybe we start on the island. Maybe we start on the north bank. But ultimately, what you find out is that I deleted a couple bridges. What you find out is that it is very difficult to find a way to cross every bridge exactly once. Well, a man named um, Euler decided, I'm going to represent these bridges with these islands, these locations with points. We've got the north bank. We've got the first island. We've got the south bank. And I guess you've got what you can call the east bank. And there's a bridge that connects the east bank and the south bank. There's actually two bridges that connect the island to the south bank and two bridges that connect the island to the north bank. And then there's one bridge that connects the island to the east bank. 
And so this might make it easier. Rather than having to walk all day finding a solution, you can now just try highlighting to see if it's possible to highlight all of the bridges. And you'll find it's very, very difficult. In fact, it is so difficult that Euler proved it was impossible to cross all bridges once. without repeating a bridge. Well, Euler's work on this problem led to what we call graph theory and was interested in a lot of different questions around graphs and connecting vertices with edges. And one of the questions that he looked at was this idea of the shortest path. How do you get? from point A to point B, the shortest, most efficient way. And there's one algorithm that came up to find the shortest path between points. It's called Dijkstra's. Sorry about the pronunciation. D-I-J-K-S-T-R-A, Dijkstra's algorithm. Which says, Here's one idea for finding the shortest path. Let's start at the end and find all distances to this point. Then from the smallest weight, find the next distances. And then we're going to kind of keep repeating this process. Of course, you never want to go back to a visited place. always wanting to move um, to an unvisited vertex until smallest path is found. Or probably shortest path would be better, but we'll stick with smallest. So for example, I'm going to draw a graph here. We're going to go from point A to point G. So I'm going to set up these points. Let's call the one on the left A, B above, C below, D in the middle, E above, F below, and G. And A is connected to B with a weight of 1 connected to C with a weight of 4. C is connected to D with a weight of 2. D is connected to B with a weight of 3. B is connected to E with a weight of 6. E is connected to D with a weight of 2. D is connected to F with a weight of 4. C is connected to F with a weight of 5. F is connected to E with a weight of 2. 2, e to g with a weight of 7, and g to f with a weight of 6. OK, so what we're going to do then is we're going to start at the end. We want to end at g. And we're going to find all distances to that point. g could go up to e. That gives g a dis total distance so far of 7. Or our next choice is we can go down with the 6. If we do that, that gives us a total distance thus far of 6. 6 is the smallest, so let's go off of the 6. From the 6, we've got a couple choices. We can go up 
That gives us a distance of 6 plus 2 is now 8. We could go across. That gives us a distance of 6 plus 4, which is now 10. Or we could go horizontally. That gives us a total distance of 6 plus 5, which is 11. So we no longer have the 6 because it's been used up. Notice the 8 that went north. There was a quicker way to get there, which was the 7. So let's cross that one off. It would have just been quicker to go directly from g to e. We don't want to end up with a total of 8 at e. Now looking at my numbers, my smallest number appears to be the 7. So from the 7, I can go down or across. If I go down, 7 plus 2 gives me a total distance of 9, which beats the 10. So we'll cross that off. If we go across, we get 7 plus 6, which is 13. And now I need another highlight color. Let's uh, see. The smallest number now is the 9. So from the 9, we can go up, which gives us 9 plus 3, a total distance of 12, which has beaten the 13. The other option is we can go down from the 9, which gives me 9 plus 2 which is 11. So we've kind of got a tie down here at the 11. The smallest number now is the 11. Finish this off from the 11. We could go up and get four more. 11 plus 4 would be 15. But 15 is bigger than the 12 we see on there. So maybe I wanted to use the 12, which gave me another one, a distance of 13. So 13 being the smallest one, working backwards, the 13 came from going from A to B, and then the B to D, and then from D to E, and then from E to G. And that was kind of the path we took that ended up giving us the smallest numbers as we went across. So our shortest path from A to G is to go from A to B, to D, to E, to G. And that total cost, we said, would be 13. That is the shortest path from A to G. The key with these is keeping things organized and remembering where we've been and making sure we're keeping track of that. So let's do another example. Let's do one with airports. Let's say we're going from Bern to Berlin. And if you can excuse the poor geography here, let's say we've got Paris over here, Amsterdam up here, Berlin is over here, we've got Munich, we've got Frankfurt. We've got Bern, and we've got Lyon. Paris is connected to Amsterdam by a one and a half hour trip. Amsterdam is connected to Berlin by a 6.25 hour trip. Berlin to Munich by a 5.25 trip. Munich to Frankfurt by 3.25. Frankfurt to Bern by a four-hour trip. Bern to Lyon by a four-hour trip. And Lyon to Paris by a two-hour trip. But then there's also the trip from Frankfurt to Amsterdam, which is a four-hour trip. We're going to start at our final destination of Berlin. And from Berlin, we've got two choices. We can go to Amsterdam, or we can go to Munich. Notice Amsterdam gives us that 6.25. Munich gives us that 5.25.
Munich is the smallest option on there. So from Munich, we're going to consider all options, which is only going to Frankfurt. So now we've got 5.25 plus 3.25. That's going to be 8.75. 8.75 is more than the 6.25. So from Amsterdam, we're going to do two options. You could go to Paris or you could go to Frankfurt. Amsterdam going down to Frankfurt would be 6 plus 4, which would be 10.25 total. Notice we can get to Frankfurt in 8.75, which is quicker. So we're not going to do that path. But going to Paris would give us 7.75, .75, which is still shortest distance right now. Frankfurt's our other shortest distance at 8.75. That's an hour longer. So we don't really have a choice going off of Paris. Let's go to Lyon. Now we're up to 9.75 with those additional two hours. Now the 8.75 is the shortest, so we'll connect to burn. 8 plus 4 is 12.75. And if that's the case, we're still cheaper right now at the 9.75 in Lyon. So what's worth checking, is there a cheaper way to get out of Lyon? Connecting Lyon would give us 9 plus 4, which is 13.75, which is an hour longer than the other way to get to Bern. And so we end up with our shortest path working backwards from Bern to Frankfurt, Frankfurt to Munich, and Munich to Berlin. So let's write that down. Our trip is Bern to Frankfurt. Munich to Berlin in the shortest amount of time, it's 12.75. And that is our shortest path. Well, now it's your turn to practice some of these shortest path algorithms, tracking where you've been, what's the cheapest way to get there. We start at the end and kind of work backwards, looking for that cheapest path, hoping to finally get to our final destination.